when you are at a supermarket and standing in the line to pay for the stuff that you bought, do you uh, glance uh, through the uh, tabloids, the magazines displayed right next to it? Do you? Sometimes I do too. And um, especially when the line is long and challenging my patience, I even pick it up and look at them. And one time, it's a long time ago, that the magazine said, quote, they said it won't last. But they were wrong. And they were celebrating a famous couple who was celebrating first wedding anniversary. And they claimed that this couple have a strong, healthy relationship. Do you know which couple they were talking about? Famous couple, but they, after one year anniversary, they broke up, they got divorced. Who that be? Or right, I give you one hint. The guy died not too long ago. Famous singer, Michael Jackson, and uh, Lisa Marie Presley. Yeah? And Pablo Lois was wrong to predict they were last, and yet they were wrong again. They said, they claimed that their marriage is strong and healthy. And it's misleading sometimes saying that celebrating healthy relationships, strong relationship, when they are only celebrating one year wedding anniversary. You know, I don't know whatever happened to uh, praise pure death to us apart. No more. Nowadays, not only in Hollywood, but in our lives, that we have a, a problem with following through commitment and faithfulness. It's not there anymore. And even people, some people buy into this kind of uh, a notion that even Hallmark uh, cards say, I cannot promise you to love you forever, but I promise you to love you today. <laughs> and so I, the, the world doesn't know what is faithfulness. The world doesn't know what is commitment. So I'm glad that we are learning and focusing on faithfulness this week so that we can be reminded and learn what it takes to be faithful to our God and to our loved ones. And through today's passage, I've asked a few questions and answered accordingly. And it's only three verses, only four, how many verses, four verses? Yeah, it's only four verses. That what is if for when we want to bear a fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness, we need to know what's the faithfulness all about, right? Who can we model after, right? So what's the definition? of faithfulness that Bible talks about and what does it require of us to bear a fruit of faithfulness and what, how, what it takes, what does it take for us to demonstrate faithfulness. So I will arrange the answer into three D's, and dependability, and determination and devotion. So
So three questions, three answers. So first, what is the definition of faithfulness? What's faithfulness is all about? Dependability. Dependable. You know, when you look into English dictionary, what does it say? Faithfulness is to follow through a commitment regardless of a difficulty. That means no matter what happens, faith, faithful people, we can count on them. We can depend on them. And three words for it is a uh, uh, and I cannot pronounce that, but it is trustworthy, reliable, dependable. So it's a dependable, dependability that we are talking about. And love is what? Love never fails. We can depend on love, right? The faithfulness is one of the form of expression of love. And in other words, faithfulness is, in an easy way, love hanging on no matter what. Right? No matter what. A guy bought a beautiful uh, earrings for his uh, uh, girlfriend's birthday, and he gave it to her with a beautiful uh, heart that said, I love you, Diane. Deep down in my heart, I love you more and more every day. You are my sunshine. You are my life. You complete me. P.S. If we ever break up, I want this hearing back. <laughs> That's a human love, right? Fortunately, our God never says, I want salvation back. No PS. If you don't do this, I'm going to take it back. Salvation is given to us as a free gift. God never asks us to give him back. But uh, awesome thing to know, right? I mean, even Jesus says, no one can take, take, snatch us out of his hand. But we do sometimes. We fall, we sin, we think that God's going to take his grace away from us. You know, sometimes we think, uh, operate in our notions, thinking that we have this certain amount of grace, God's grace and forgiveness, God's blessings assigned to us. So that whenever we sin and we repent of our sins and then we do it again and again the same, all same sin, then we wonder, we start wondering, will God take me seriously? i done, i failed again. I've sinned again. The same sin that I repented. I have been forgiven. But I do again. Will God forgive me again for that? What is your answer? Yes, yes His grace is abundant. Right? And He will. But sometimes we forget that. That's what this uh, verse 22 says. We are not consumed because of his mercies, right? And it says what? Because of his compassions never fail. Compassions not, fail not. And we are, we deserve to be punished. We deserve to be consumed. This is written when after the destruction of Jerusalem, when God's people disobeyed God terribly, but they weren't consumed because of God's mercies. They weren't consumed because of God's compassions never fail. 
That's what it is talking about. And then I want you guys to notice that mercies and compassions. Why is it not singular? Why is it plural? Plural. Plural. Ah, you gotta say. Why is it plural? Why is it plural? I said, right? Why is it? You, you know, compassion. Can you call mercy? Why we say mercies and compassions? Because God's mercies and compassions limitless, and it's abundant. It applies to everybody, anybody. That's why it's a original language. It's a yes. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, God keeps His promises, and and He says uh, when we are walking into the valley of the shadow of death, He'll be with us. And when we are making eternal journey, and He will come and get us. Don't let your heart be troubled. I will come back and get you. I prepare a room for you. If he doesn't keep his promises, then he's not God, right? God, we can count on him. God is 100% reliable, 100% dependable, 100% trustworthy. Isn't it? Yes. That's why we say, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And then the good news is what? They come huh? every morning. You every morning. Verse 23. You every morning. That's why great is thy faithfulness. You every morning. We don't have to Leave off of leftover blessing, leftover grace. We can start brand new abundant grace, abundant blessings each day, every day. Isn't that hallelujah? Amen. Is that it's an awesome thing to know that His uh, grace, His mercy, His faithfulness is when you freshly come to us every morning. And we are called to imitate. That's the difficult part, right? We are called to imitate His faithfulness. We are called to imitate His faithfulness means what? We are called to forgive, love, and we are be kind and patient as everything like what he does, limitless, fresh every morning. That's why you don't go to bed in anger. You solve, you forgive. Every morning you start fresh, fresh, right? It's a fresh. That is what we have to imitate. So how do we imitate? What does it require of us? Determination. We've got to determine to be attached to the divine. To the vine. Jesus says, Well, I am the vine, you are the branches. Apart from me, no can do nothing, right? If we want to imitate, bear a fruit of the spirit faithfulness, imitate God's faithfulness, we've got to attach to the farm. So, I mean, you know apple tree bears apples, right? And then let's say an apple tree branch detached itself and went into an orchid tree there and attached to an orchid tree and it was thinking, wondering, now, how do I bear apple? Will it be so? Can it bear any apple in the midst of orchid tree? No. no, not at all. That's why we need to be attached to the vine, to Jesus, to our God, in order for us to 
bear any of the spiritual fruit that we are talking about. Why do we have to be determined on? Hmm? Can we just, uh, you know, at the moment, why do we have to determine? You gotta take the first step. Yeah? Because there is Satan always uh, working, 24-7 working, and lure us away from our Lord Jesus, lure us away from the way uh, or the, in our faith journey and faithfulness. Remember he challenged Jesus, I mean before Jesus even began his ministry, Satan tempted him how many times? Three times. And then he did he wasn't done, right? He retrieved, wait until an opportune time, right? And then and then what? In doing his ministry, Satan challenged him over and over. Even in Matthew chapter 16, I believe, there um, Jesus was telling his uh, disciples that I am going into Jerusalem and I'm going to die and I'm going to rise from the dead. And uh, Peter said what? Jesus, don't go. And there is a famous Jesus said what? Satan, get behind. Jesus didn't say Peter was Satan. Jesus recognized Satan was using Peter to stop Jesus doing what the Lord God has, has him to do, his mission. Right? He was gone home attached to his father. He said, I in him. He is in me, right? Attached to his father. And then on the even on the cross, Satan used the people to uh, tell Jesus to stop. It's gonna be too much for you. And people said what? Well, if you are the son of God, command angels to attend you and why don't you come down and show us your power? And Satan tried to over divert God's plan for humanity. And Jesus says what? Well, even unto that, he says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. And Jesus, pushing forward, determined to finish what he has come to do. Even he prayed himself, right? Father, take this cup away. It was too hard for him. But if it is, you will. Not my will, but you will be done. And that's what we have to do unto that. That's how we can bear fruit of faithfulness. How can we do that? We are human. We cannot do with our own strength. We need a God's strength. We need to attach to Jesus and uh, strengthen by His Spirit. Because He's been there, done that. He knows we are, we are struggling. He knows. And uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says what? Our God is faithful, and He will not what? let us tempt Him beyond what we can bear. And when we are tempted, He is faithful, so He will what? Give us way out. And as a lot of people say, well, God didn't stop me. That's why I did what I did. And you got to ask, well, did you ask God? Yeah? Were you attached to God or detached? Mm -hmm. And we blame God. Why didn't He just uh, give me the, you know? But if when we are attached, then we are able to overcome temptations. We are able to bear a fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. So we better be determined, right? And when we are determined, now we know. The, the definition, faithfulness, 
we know we are going to be attached to Jesus. And then, how do we show that we are faithful? What does it take to demonstrate our faithfulness? It takes devotion. My all allegiance and devotion go to serve the man who died upon that cross. That's what it takes. And when we get the strength for that, verse 25, it says what? Lord is good to those who wait and seek Him. It's a total devotion. You know, let's say, if someone says, I love the Lord, and yet, they are not devoted into the work of the church, into uh, their devotion. How can anyone tell that they are really in love with Jesus? When you say, I love you, I love you, Lord, and love and faithfulness go together, right? Faithfulness is love hanging on, regardless whatever you are discouraged, disappointed, whatever trials you go through, you made a commitment, like our new members did a commitment, made a covenant to them. That covenant is not only between us and them, it's between them and God, and you say you love God, and I will follow you, I commit myself to follow you all the days of my life, and yet something challenges you, something discourages you, or your life is something going on, and you fall out to worship the Lord God. Then, no one can say you are very faithful, right? Faithful means what? Regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of the situation. I mean, let's say a husband or a wife, let's put it wife. Wife says to her husband, I love you. I love you very, very much. You are my life. You are my sunshine. And yet, go out and have an affair. Right? Then, how persuasive you can be, you are going to be labeled as what? Unfaithful spouse. Doesn't it? You are not devoted to the welfare of your marriage. Right? Devote. It has to be. Faithfulness has to be demonstrated in devotion and demonstrated that love is action, right? And when you say, I love you, your actions are going to have to follow your words and to show, to demonstrate faithfulness. You know, Apostle Paul did that too, right? Apostle Paul, can we say he's, he was a faithful person, faithful um, disciple, apostle? Right? Why do we do that? Because he's been through ups and downs. He's been through put in jail, and he, he, he's been through a shipwreck and beaten up, and every town he goes, he got kicked out. What else? Put in prison, and all that at the end of his life, when he was uh, facing his mortality, what did he say? He wrote to Timothy, it's the second Timothy chapter 4, he says what? I have a fought to fight. I have finished my race. I have kept my faith. Therefore, I am looking forward to receive the crown that Lord God has prepared for those who are faithful.
total allegiance and devotion. Then can we say same thing to Peter, who made all kinds of uh, uh, mistakes? Can we say that he was his faithful apostle? Hmm? Yes and no. Yes or no. All right. You see, we are hesitant because we know all his uh, hiccups, all his uh, failures, and he opened big mouth so all all the time. He put um, foot in his mouth, right? And he tried. I mean, on top of our head, we know he uh, he um, denied Jesus three times, and we know he said uh, things that. Jesus could call him uh, Satan, get behind. And we know when the transfiguration, he was only thinking about it. Oh Lord, let's build the tabernacle up here, three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he doesn't want to go down, right? And all of those, and he tried to walk on water, but he failed, lack of faith. I mean, you can pick out uh, all kinds of things. But yet, notice, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, but there was 120 people known, got all empowered by the power of the Holy Spirit, and yet, who was chosen to preach the gospel? Peter. Why is that? He was forgiven. Hmm? He was forgiven. Yes, he was forgiven. Peter, God chose Peter to establish church because Peter went through what we are going through. Peter knows how to fall, how to fail, and how to get up. Peter knows what is the, the repentance and how to receive God's grace. Peter knows all. And so the Holy Spirit says, yes, you can lead people to the Lord Jesus. You know what it's like. Brothers and sisters, that we may, you may, have fallen. You may be discouraged. You may be disappointed at your faith journey sometimes, at times. But remember, God used Peter to accomplish his will, his plan for his life. So can he use you too? God's grace it's not ever ending. And God will use you when you know to get back up and make a resume your faith journey. And that's faithfulness. You will have hiccups, you will have ups and downs, but deep down in your heart, you are devoted to our Lord Jesus. And when you look up, he will pick your hand and walk with you. That's how you bear a fruit of the Spirit, faithfulness. Amen? Amen. You know, Amy Flint, the, the famous uh, the poem that says uh, what God has promised, God has not promised the blue skies, no, you don't know. And but God has promised strength for the day and uh, grace for the day. Nobody knows. Oh, I should have. Uh, I didn't memorize it, so never mind. And because we are called to imitate God's attributes, God's all God's characters. We are called to be more, to be more like Jesus Christ. And uh, especially in this society, the lack of faithfulness, because people do not know what is true faithfulness all about. And here we come. We can imitate God, and we can repent and renew, and we can their food of faithfulness and to tell to impact 
the world. Amen. So let us remember, let us be dependable, trustworthy people, and let us determine ourselves to stay attached to the vine, and let us make our all allegiance and devotion for the soul of the man who died upon that tree. Amen? Amen. That's when we can bear a fruit of uh, uh, the Spirit, faithfulness, and that's when we all going to hear what? Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful to small things. I will give you what? Greater things to do. And come on in, join in my party. That's what our Lord Jesus is going to say to all of you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray.